funny the news. I said no. I said his mom got shot, and my daughter got shot, and my granddaughter got shot as well. That gentleman used to ask my ex for a ride because he was running late to take the bus to go to work. So I just can't believe it. This happened. It's a terrible story, and we're learning more about what led up to a deadly shooting at a North Las Vegas apartment complex Monday night. Now, Channel 13 is the only news station speaking with the family of some of the victims as they seek answers. Our J. Wan Jung walks us through the criminal history of the gunman. The family of some of the victims in Monday night shooting here at Craig Ranch Villas want to know how a crime like this could have happened. We found out the gunman had a criminal past and even spent time in prison. I'm not sure what was on his mind that he had to do that. Go upstairs and open the door and start shooting my family. The Munoz family is torn apart after a gunman opened fire at a North Las Vegas apartment complex shooting six people, leaving five of them dead. Now a growing memorial stands in front of the doorway where the crime took place. 59-year-old Damiana or Anna Munoz, 40-year-old Amy Munoz, and 21-year-old Christopher Munoz were killed. 13-year-old Olivia remains in the hospital in critical condition. I was really shaken up because I see my mom on the ground. Isaac Munoz is Anna's son. He did not want to be on camera but spoke exclusively to Channel 13 about what he saw. It took like three minutes to call 911. And then 911, the operator told me to uh, start doing CPR on my mom. Isaac tells me the gunman that police identified as 47 year old Eric Adams was his neighbor who lived downstairs. He says Adams got into a domestic dispute in his apartment. He says it escalated to a shooting on both floors. And I saw my little cousin gasping for air in the corner. And I just couldn't. I, it was all a blur. We wanted to learn more about the gunman. We found these court documents dating back nearly 25 years reveal Adams had a history of domestic violence and battery. Even as recent as three months ago, according to Metro Police, he was arrested for domestic battery. I also reached out to one of Adams former attorneys, David Sheik. He represented Adams in a 1999 murder case, which Adams was found not guilty. Sheik says his former client was at the wrong place at the wrong time when he was charged, but was surprised to learn about his role in this shooting. That gentleman used to ask my ex for a ride because he was running late to take the bus to go to work. Sal Munoz is Isaac's father and spoke to Channel 13 Tuesday. He tells me none of his family members felt their neighbor was dangerous. And now the Munoz family is left without a mom. My ex-wife was just being a great person. A sister, a brother, a cousin. They were just really nice people. They were innocent people. A daughter and a son. He's the type of person to give you his last dollar in his wallet. I'm Jay Wan Jung reporting. Fourth of July turning tragic inside a fifth floor apartment of this Queens building on 94th Avenue. Well, this is a sad situation. Police say a 20 year old man used this knife to stab an eight year old boy to death, possibly his brother or stepbrother. They say he also stabbed the 29 year old mother in the back. She ran out of the building bleeding and pleading for help. Police arrived three minutes later. What they were confronted with was our perpetrating holding his father in a headlock with a knife to his throat. Police repeatedly told him to drop the knife. When he didn't, they fired once. The 20 year old was taken to the hospital where he died. Just a reminder of being a New York City police officer, what they have to walk into and decisions they have to make quickly. And by making those decisions, they saved two lives tonight. One of them, an eight month old child who was also home at the time. This neighbor who didn't want to show her face saw an officer carry that child to an ambulance. She looked like she was okay, thankfully, but she looked like she was untouched. The paramedics seems to have been taking care of her. That baby was unharmed, but taken to the hospital. Both parents are expected to survive. Police still investigating exactly what led up to this tragedy. In Jamaica, Queens, Lori Bordenero, CBS 2 News. Fresh investigators are processing a crime scene near Albany after three people were killed inside a home. The parish sheriff says the fatal shots were fired by a woman from Jefferson Parish and one of the victims was an eight year old. Rob Masson joins us now with more on the story. Rob. And Liz and Lee Livingston Sheriff Jason Ard says 49 year old Jenny Williamson apparently shot her husband Stephen Williamson and an eight year old child in their custody either late Friday night or early Saturday morning. Authorities say at this point they don't have a motive for the shooting involving a couple who recently moved to the Albany area not far from Interstate 12.
This is horrible. I mean, this is something that you never want to see. Uh, I'm sure that, you know, everybody has questions. Uh, I do believe that uh, it is safe to say that this is not a, a random deal. This was uh, is, is contained, confined, that people can at least rest knowing that it's not a random shooting. And the sheriff says the investigation is difficult because there were no eyewitnesses or electronic clues to exactly what happened. The sheriff says there was no history of violence at the home. Well, Curtis, we know that Florence police officers began receiving 911 calls of an active shooter inside this residence here behind me. Those calls coming in just before 3 a.m. Police said that a birthday party was going on at the time. As we zoom in here, you can see there's been some 4th of July decorations. Earlier, we saw some balloons for a birthday party, and now this entire home is just covered with crime tape. As we zoom in and take a close look at that front door, you can see that glass door is completely off the hinges. This home now a crime scene. Now, officers found seven people with gunshot wounds, including two people outside the home. Four were found dead at the scene, including 20-year-old Shane Miller, 20-year-old Hayden Rabicki, 19-year-old Delaney Erie, and 44-year-old Melissa Parrott. Now, we're told Parrott lived in this home. She's the mother of the 21-year-old whose birthday was being celebrated. The three others shot remain hospitalized tonight. Officers, um rendered first aid to several victims. And right now we have three victims at UC Medical in Cincinnati that are all stable and will uh, make a full recovery. Now, police say when they arrived here on the scene, that suspect was still firing shots and then they actually watched him take off. And we now know a chase ensued. Tonight, we are learning new details about who that suspect is and the dramatic moments after police arrived here on the scene. I'll bring in WWT News 5's Daisy Kershaw. She's continuing our team coverage tonight. Daisy, what do we know about this suspect? Lindsay, he's identified as 21 year old Chase Garvey. Police say after killing four people and injuring three others, Garvey took off, leading them on a chase before ultimately turning the gun on himself. Police saying that Garvey died of a self inflicted gunshot wound. Now take a look at this video here shared with us by a neighbor. You can see Garvey looking around people's yards just minutes before the shooting happens. Neighbors tell me this is a quiet, tight knit neighborhood. This tragedy coming as a shock. Lots of heartbreak here tonight. I'm told so many in the area were close with one of the victims, Melissa Perrette, who was hosting the party. A father and daughter who live next door tell me they'd been at that party earlier in the night before this all unfolded. We're just lucky we're, we were safe in a sense, but it doesn't make it any better for it's this is affecting the whole neighborhood, losing our great neighbor, you know. I mean, she was just a beautiful woman, beautiful heart. Um, and I, I mean that in the most sincere way. I mean, it's not just a cliche thing to say. I mean, she she was a beautiful person in and out. Neighbors tell me that this has been just incredibly shocking and heartbreaking, saying that Melissa Perrette was like the heart of this neighborhood. So many have fond memories of times spent at her home and her loss, as well as the three other victims, is just unimaginable for folks here. Reporting live in Florence, Daisy Kershaw, WLWT News 5. Daisy, thank you. And you know, just in the last few moments, we actually saw three more people arrive here at the scene. They were all crying. And at one point they all stopped and had a hug with each other. They're just taking in this scene. I want to point out here, this is actually a canopy here. Earlier is where we saw some of those birthday balloons here. And it also shows you just how close this home is to the other homes. Daisy just touched on, you know, this is a very tight knit, close knit neighborhood. A lot of people affected by what happened in the last day or so. So of course we are trying to get more information as you can imagine, this is still very early in the investigation. So right now we are waiting to get more information from the Florence Police Department. Of course, as we do get that information, we will update you when we learn more. Curtis, I'll send it back to you. start for the 4th of July holiday. Two women are dead and their three young children are fighting for their lives after a mass shooting on the south side. We have team coverage on the investigation. CBS 2's Sade Gray spoke exclusively with one of the victim's mothers who says she died shielding her son from the bullets. But we start with Assal Rezai at Chicago Police Headquarters. Assal? 
Yeah, police say right now they are looking through surveillance video for any possible people involved in that shooting that's left so many people distraught today. We're told the family was inside of their home when bullets came flying in through the window just after six o'clock this morning. Take a look at this video, a chaotic scene near 71st Street and Woodlawn. You can see at one point a police officer holding a small child near a stretcher there. The shooting happened around 6.15 this morning. Multiple bullet holes could be seen in the home's window there. Shell casings littered the street, we're told, from a rifle and a handgun. Three boys, a five-year-old, a seven-year-old, and an eight-year-old were all hit by gunfire and taken to the hospital. They remain in critical condition. Their mothers were both killed, 42-year-old Nakisha Strong and 24-year-old Capri Edwards. Emotions running high as neighbors spoke with us after the shooting, followed by victims' advocates. You can wake up five in the morning decided to go run in somebody's house and do something like this and don't think that ain't gonna affect nobody or you I don't even think that's all I can say Chicago let's just come together let's come together let, let's stop it all we know it's senseless we hear it every day but if we don't work together it won't stop Earlier, police said they were looking into the possibility that all of this stemmed from a personal dispute and that some of the suspects were seen wearing ski masks and knocking on the door of one of the homes on that street. Police asking with anybody with any information to come forward. They say at this time, no one has been arrested. I'm live at Chicago Police Headquarters, S.L. Rezai, CBS 2 News. I'm Sharnay Gray, live at Comer Children's Hospital, where the family tells us a woman and her niece died this morning. We exclusively spoke to Capri Edwards' mother, who says her daughter is a hero for protecting her children. She shielded her baby so that he wouldn't get hit. So she really died to save her children. Marquita Scott is calling her daughter, 24-year-old Capri Edwards, a hero for protecting her one-year-old son after she was killed in a mass shooting. But two of her other kids were shot, five-year-old Scotty and eight-year-old Colby. Edwards' aunt, 42-year-old Nakisha Strong, was also killed. Her seven-year-old son, Bryson, was shot. All three kids are in the hospital fighting for their lives. Scott described Strong as a mother, grandmother, aunt, and a very loving person. She says Edwards was not only her daughter, but her best friend, who she spoke to every day on FaceTime. I say my daughter's a hero because she did what she's supposed to do to protect her kids, and she gave her own life up to make sure that her children were fine. And I will always love her for that, and I will always just tell her she's my hero. Scott says their main focus right now is to make sure their grandchildren pull through. Reporting live at Comer Children's Hospital, Sardé Gray, CBS 2 News. A Georgia man is accused of driving to Fort Worth and killing his father. And the man who was killed was a junior ROTC instructor at North Crowley High School. Ticia is live this morning in Fort Worth with new details from court documents. Ticia. Yeah, good morning, guys. 54-year-old Master Sergeant Gene Bass was shot Friday, and his son was arrested the next day in Georgia. Now, police say 27-year-old Xavier Bass shot his father multiple times and killed him in front of his father's home last Friday on Chesapeake Bay Drive in South Fort Worth. He died at the scene. Witnesses told investigators that Xavier got out of a black Mustang and approached his father while tossing the handgun. His father had told his son not to play with the gun before being killed. Court documents also mentioned that the son spoke to a woman before the shooting. She says in part, quote, Xavier broke down and told her he needed to drive to Texas and that she would find out why when she saw it on the news, end quote. The woman also says he told her the day before the shooting he was going to drive to see his mom, sell his black Mustang, and check himself into a mental hospital. The woman also told investigators Xavier blamed his father for leaving him and his mom to struggle. Xavier was identified 
identified as the suspect in a surveillance video and was arrested the next day in Valdosta, Georgia, 900 miles away from the home in South Fort Worth. So he's sitting in the jail, in jail there this morning, and it is not clear when he'll be extradited here in North Texas. For Good Day, I'm TCM Muzinga.